It's quite simple. What kind of super weapon would we get if we combined all the weapons for a class and their slot if they were compiled together? This video series aims to explore exactly that, so let's see what horrible contraptions we would concoct. Today, we're tackling the soldier, but before we begin, I'm going to make a quick announcement. Epitome. There. Jesus. I'm sorry. Alright, for the real announcement, I'm not going to include the rocket jumper for the primary since that is a training weapon designed for practicing the movement of rocket jumping. It would basically nullify everything and just turn it into another rocket jumper. So, no more announcements after that, let's get to it. For Solly's primary, we are going to end up with the original beggar launching 5,000 cows directly with an air bazooka box strike. The following attributes would be that rockets would fly straight down the crosshair from the center of the screen. The secondary fire is a charged shot that mini crits players causes enemies to suffer afterburn damage for 6 seconds, disables buildings for 4 seconds, it will empty the entire ammo meter, and it cannot be used unless the ammo meter is full, and I will explain why this is a big deal shortly. If you hold the fire, it can load up to three rockets and releasing fire will unleash the barrage at a 70% increased fire rate. This will also be important later on. Now, the rocket has the following positives, and this is with everything balanced out already. It would have a 120% faster rocket speed. It would guarantee mini crit damage on opponents sent airborne by an explosion, grapple hook, or enemy attack. On hit, it would restore up to 20 health points. It would have 40% decrease in rocket jump damage. It would have an increased attack speed while blast jumping. The clip sized would be increased on kill up to 4. And it does not use ammo, it would use the bison's ammo meter. However, it does have a few tragic consequences. There are no random critical hits. It only deals 20% damage to buildings. It cannot be crit boosted at any time. It would have plus 3 degrees of random projectile deviation. Overloading the chamber will cause a misfire. There is no explosion radius because the explosion radius penalties exceeded 100%. And it has a 15% damage penalty. What we're basically ending up with is the super hobo version of the direct hit. Well, except that projectiles kind of deviate and you literally cannot do damage unless you hit somebody directly. But the real powerful thing here is that with the airstrike scaling with increased clip size on kill, we get some incredible buffs and consequences. Since the ammo system is now automated, it means that always having ammo for maximum bombardment will never be an issue. It also means that with enough kills, one could launch up to seven beggars rockets at one instead of three. Because why wouldn't you why wouldn't it scale up? If you can somehow magically fit more rockets in the same tube by killing somebody, you could do the same with the beggars if it had the scaling. Here's where one of the negatives comes in. The alt fire cannot be fired until the ammo meter is completely full, which means that if you scale up and you're fitting more ammo into your rocket, you cannot shoot that until you've reached maximum. So alt fire wouldn't be viable once you really got killing because the reload time would be so much longer. You'd also be spamming pretty much every single shot since your rockets would be slightly unreliable at all times. Rocket jump airstrikes would also be incredibly difficult and widespread. In addition to all of this, you would have to have a max clip to have any hope of destroying a level 1 sentry, let alone a level 3. On to the secondaries. The soldier's shotgun would be the Righteous Panic Shooter. The following attributes would be that mini crits only take effect within 5 seconds of deploying the weapon, and instead shoots an electric projectile instead of shotgun pellets. It can light friendly huntsman arrows on fire, and upon pressing and holding down the primary fire, the player will begin loading, well I guess electric projectiles, into the magazine port, and will continue to do so as long as the primary fire is held down. This shotgun does have a large list of positives. It would have a 20% faster weapon switch to speed, and a 15% faster weapon switch from speed. In addition, it would mini crit targets that are blast jumping, knocked back, air blasted, or using the grappling hook. It does not use ammo and is also replaced with an ammo meter. The projectile penetrates enemy targets, the projectiles cannot be deflected, and has a 50% faster reload time, and the weapon deploys 50% faster. It also has a 30% faster fire rate, the fire rate increases as your health goes down, and the fire can hold up to 2 shells. 
However, the major downsides are is that the bullet spread increases as your health decreases. It has a 60% smaller clip size, so you only get two shots with it, and projectile damage is reduced by 25% for each enemy penetrated. It also only does 20% damage to buildings. This shotgun would be, in total, incredibly lackluster. While you could get off shots very quickly and reload quickly and take this gun at any given time with almost no weight between using it, the panic attack's reload mechanic means that you can't react to air shots well. And even if you could, since it's not hitscan, you'd have to lead the shot anyways. You'd basically be shooting two electric booper bullets and then reloading. Now, frantically, you could hold it in reserve until the right moment, but would you kill anybody? Probably not unless you're right in their face. Next up would be the Buff Battalion's Conjurer's Jumper. And this thing is only positives across the board. It is insane. Charges a Rage Meter with damage dealt. It takes 560 damage to fully charge the Rage Meter, which is an average of the three backpacks. At 100% charge, using it grants the player and nearby teammates 10 seconds of guaranteed mini crits, immunity to critical damage, raises resistance to damage by 35%, raises resistance to sentry gun damage by 50%, which is not stacked with the damage percentage, their movement speed is also boosted, and they are healed for 35% of the damage they deal. Even while the backpack is not active, it will passively grant a health regeneration depending on the recent damage taken. The maximum is plus 4 health received every second after amount of time has passed. It passively increases your maximum health by 20 points. And while you're in the air, you can press space to slow your descent. Gods above! When you hear this horn go off, just, just run! Like, the only thing that could stop a backpack soldier is another backpack soldier, since you're immune to critical damage. I'm sorry, did you say that you had a Kritzkrieg ready? That doesn't matter. It would pretty much be a war of who got this thing activated first. And finally, we have the Man Boats. These grant 60% less self-damage from rocket jumping. However, this does not affect fall damage. And you also get a 75% reduction in push force from enemy damage and you deal three times damage to the player that you land on. The interesting thing to note here is that this weapon does have a very major use. When combined with the original beggar launching 5,000 cows directly with an air bazooka box strike, you take no rocket jump damage. While wearing these boots, boats? You are a perfect rocket jumping machine, and if you land on somebody, you are going to pretty much guarantee that you kill since you also have you know, the direct hit combined with an airstrike. Even at that range, right on their head, you're going to hit someone. Now, interestingly enough, without a rocket jumper, we still have a way to reach no rocket jumping damage, which is great for practice anyways. Finally, we have the Soldier's Melee, the equalizing half-disciplined gardener train of escape. When this weapon is active, the following traits are true. Damage increase as your health decreases, along with movement speed as your health decreases. You will receive 90% less healing from medic sources. You will also take mini crits while your weapon is active and for 3 seconds while switching away. However, there are some pretty strong positive attributes. You have a 107% longer melee range, and on kill you are healed for 50% base health. When you hit an ally, you increase your speed for 4 seconds and an ally speed for 2. You will deal crits while the wielder is rocket jumping, and a single successful hit with an enemy wielding the same weapon is an insta-kill. However, the negatives are as follow. You will deal 25% less damage, have a 20% slower firing speed, you will have no random critical hits. Since it is technically a sword, you will have a slower deploy and holster time, the weapon is honor bound, and once drawn, you will take a 50 HP penalty unless it kills when you switch away. Now, this melee is primarily interesting because normally, one can pull out a melee for close combat and if they are desperate. Here, when you pull out your melee, it is a proverbial death sentence unless it is planned and executed fairly well. Even if you have the man boats equipped, if you pull this out to market garden someone and you fail to kill and you need to jump away, you're going to lose 50 health regardless. In addition to that, you're going to have a glowing skull over your head, and everyone will target you. 
Fascinatingly, if you do kill, you are heavily rewarded by gaining up to 50% health back, and if you're running away, you're going to run away pretty quickly. The melee range also works in the gardener's benefit, giving the actual hit range about the length of two gardeners, so you won't have to be as accurate. Let's not forget that if you taunt, you can blow yourself up and everybody around you. That settles it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'm glad that everybody showed a big interest in this I'm going to do, uh, hopefully the rest of the classes. So stay tuned, because more will be coming your way. Bye-bye. Congratulations to Gingbro for making it to 100 YouTube subscribers recently. He's a good fellow who deserves a little more attention than he has, so please check out his Becoming Team Fortress 2 video, which is based off of one of my silliest audio bloopers thus far. The video link is in the description below. And consider letting me know about your own awesome accomplishments in the Space Barber Steam group. A link is also in the description for that. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and please, stay tuned because more will be coming your way.